the title of this is Impartation and Desliming. One very um, churchy word and one very not churchy word. More, more playground, but um, they're both very important. Necessary. <laughs> yeah, they are necessary. And I ask, can you, you know, y'all, I mean, I ask, have you ever prayed for the sick? And everyone here at that time had prayed for the sick. Have it, have you all prayed for the sick? Yeah. Sweet. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> y'all are going to be so fired up. Um, so Jane started by telling a story, uh, telling one uh, a testimony of praying for the sick and having an amazing, amazing result. And then Kathy's told us one of two. So tell us the second one. I'm not sure now I should speak because it's, it's such a good place to leave you, but the healing didn't happen in the second situation. That's okay. Is it okay? Yes. Healing doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. the, Rodney does. talked about it last night. Mm -hmm. I felt bad that I didn't say that the first night. I'm going to try to make sure that I make a point of it, but my sister died of ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. I want to chime in on that real quick. Um, one of the things I learned when I went to Brazil, because I struggled with that too, like when you pray for some people and they were healed and mm -hmm. others and they weren't, and somebody asked me the question, they said, will you take the glory from God when they're healed? And I was like, well, obviously no. And they said, then stop yes. carrying the burden when they're not. And so just true. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yes. just when you're praying for people, like <laughs> you just have to be obedient to what God's asked you to do in it. Mm -hmm. But what happens is supernatural. That's yes. with yep. them the Holy Spirit. That's good. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I feel like it was very freeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was very freeing. Wow. So <laughs> when armed with that, go ahead and tell us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm visiting my sister who lives in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and we've been attending some teaching on heal a healing ministry as well with Bill Subritsky. And I, I just, I'm just watching. If anyone has a need, oh, yeah. let's pray. So we go to a coffee shop, and um, one of her favorites, and the man who now owns the coffee shop um, is not a Christian. I don't know what faith he might have been, but he came out to speak with us because she enjoys people and she's very chatty and and in the midst of our conversation he said i just broke my thumb uh, a day or two ago he's the baker of this Ooh. coffee shop and I, my first reaction <laughs> oh you can't have a broken thumb and bake <laughs> so i said would you like me to pray for your hand and he looks a little stunned and he said oh sure and so i took his hand and I prayed for it, and I waited, <laughs> and nothing happened. <laughs> and we sort of followed him for the next day or so, and mm, there was nothing. And I thought, okay, did I run ahead of you, Lord? Was this my idea and not yours? What happened here? And a few days later, I went to a, a shop that my sister knew the owner. She and her husband were there. I just walked in the door, and the Holy Spirit was present to me. And I knew it was for her. And I just turned to her and I said, I, I, I think God wants to do something in your life. And she <laughs> looks at me. <laughs> but she didn't want prayer, so that was okay. I'm sorry, I squeezed in an extra one. But yes, I, I was surprised and didn't quite know what to do with that because I had experienced something very different before. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time, okay, when I was healed, I was really, really excited, but really had no clue, no grid for this. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the church that I went to was not very helpful mm -hmm. because the first thing they said was, you know, maybe it'd be better if you didn't tell anyone right away <laughs> because you wouldn't want people to think that God healed you and then if you lose your healing, mm. that he took it away. Mm. So I didn't, and I was leading a group of high school students, a big group of high school students, and they had been praying for my healing but I waited three months oh because I was trying to protect 
God's reputation. Yeah. And hi. Hi. Sorry. And when I, um, I didn't know what I was doing, guys. I, I kept hearing, I would walk into a Bible study and the people in the back would, before they saw me, would turn around and I was like, hi. They said, we felt the anointing. What? I mean, not just me. What are you talking about the anointing? And, they, and I was like, you know, because I've got this glitter stuff. I thought maybe this glitter stuff has got some kind of force field or something. I had no idea because I was so, so clueless about all of this that um, I started call I got in touch with the friend who asked Rodney to pray for me because I kept going to people and saying, guys, is there a book about this? I need to read. I need a manual. I need to know how to walk this out. And they were like, there's no book. Well, how can there not be a book? Just read your Bible. That, you know, I've been doing that since I was that tall. That's not really helping me on this. Um, so got in touch with Rodney Hogue. And he said, yeah, she can call me. So I started having this phone conversation with Rodney and his wife, Mary. And the first time I called him, I was like, okay, you got to tell me about this anointing stuff. You know, is this anointing thing? I understand I've got some anointing, but I don't see it. Other people seem to see it. Other people seem to feel it. What do I do with it? Is it like a tan? Is it going to fade? <laughs> and I really thought that's what an anointing was. It just happened just when you had just been touched by heaven and that it would fade off. Mm -hmm. So he said, Rodney, he called me about a week later and said, Susan, you know, I'm doing this identity conference and it's a week long conference and maybe it would be a good idea if you flew out here. I'm on in North Carolina <laughs> on one coast in the States. He's in California, opposite coast. And I've just been healed, guys. So my family is still struggling with, you know, my husband, we always went to the beach every summer. And that's what we did as a family every year. That summer, they didn't, my husband didn't re rent the beach house because he, he, as he told the kids, I didn't rent the beach house because I was planning to bury your mother. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's where, that's how bad my situation was so that um, he didn't let me fly out there and I needed to take a son with me. And so I took, um, I have three sons and a daughter and I took my third son, Taylor, and we flew to California, went to the conference and the first day um, I d we didn't have a car because they, it, he lived in a small town and the very first day I got into Rodney and Mary's car and jumped into the back seat with the Bible and he says, you know, so what's going on with you? And I said, Rodney, I understand a little bit about this anointing, you know, that, that it's going to be with me. I want to pray for as many people as possible while that's still hanging around. You know, and he's like, you know, it's not hanging. But I did, I, guys, I didn't understand the impartation that I'd received. And that's why I want to make, I want to talk to y'all about it because there are things that make it stronger and there are things that make it, um, uh, that quench the spirit. And you probably already know that, but I just, that's one of the things on my heart. Um, so I jumped in the back seat and I opened up my Bible and I said, what about all these feathers? And he was like, what? And there are feathers flying everywhere because it seemed like no matter where I went, there was a feather. And I would pick it up, stuff it in my Bible and keep going. Or I'd get finished praying and there'd be a feather. Or I was in the car with the window shut, <laughs> with the doors closed, and there would be a feather in my lap. And that continued to be... And I know God must be up in heaven going, 
how many feathers do I have to send her before she figures out, good morning, come on in, what these feathers are about. Guys, <coughs> I'm bringing that one up to you because I have no clue what the feathers are about. They seem to happen when I'm on the right path, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what feathers are about. Do you? <laughs> with the dove and the Holy Spirit. The dove. Angels. The Holy Spirit. Angelic. 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 You know, my, um, a friend of mine had this happen to her. She's actually not attending church right now. This just happened last year. And she was coming out of a relationship. And everywhere she went, she would find feathers. And she kept, wow. she started going back collecting them. She would find them everywhere in the strangest places. And then she said to me, because she, she was from a Catholic upbringing, so she had a faith in God. She just wasn't attending church. Mm -hmm. But she says, I think God is telling me that I'm safe to fly, that I can leave this relationship. Ah. I can leave this relationship and I'm going to be fine. Cool. And she wow. did. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, now that everyone is here, I want to go around one more time. Okay? Sorry about that. <coughs> no, I'm thrilled that you all are here and it's got a little more difficult to find. Um, I'm Susan. This is Perrin, Fern, Warwick, Warwick. Say it properly. Warwick. 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 Yeah. Janet. Janet. Kevin. Kevin. Andrea. Kathy, Martine, Sue, David, Jane, Kathy, James. Awesome. What a great group. <laughs> so guys, impartation. <clears throat> there are one of the first things that I figured out is that when your hand, when you feel your hand, uh, does everyone get feel it in their hand? Do, some people feel it in their heads. I think you can still get impartation even if you don't feel it then. Yes, right. Um, Randy Clark says that 50% feel it, 50% yeah. don't. It's really just more fun when you feel it. <laughs> it is, and I think he knew that I needed it, so I feel it travel down my arm to my hand. I can feel it. I don't know where it goes from here, but I mean, it could be way up there. I have no idea. <laughs> but I feel it in my hand. Hi! And when I pray, I usually don't feel anything at all, but then other people will feel stuff. So. How cool is that? Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> okay, so Perrin, what makes it feel stronger? What makes... When I am praying for someone, and I don't really... You know, we've been doing something very... You know, grocery shopping. Something that's not about worship. At the point, at the time. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. So, <sighs> back to your question. What makes the impartation or the the flow of the spirit? stronger when you're praying for someone. One of the things that I've discovered is that if I'm in a grocery store and the Lord says, I want you to pray for someone, and he highlights someone to me, that, it's always strong. Mm -hmm. Because that's a directive from him. Mm -hmm. If someone comes up to me and says, will you pray for me? You know, I've got, you know, I think I saw you in church last week would you pray for me? I clipped my elbow and it really hurts. Well, I'm there trying to pick out which melon looks the best and they're asking me for prayer. I look at them and I have three, thing, three things that I ask them. And it all, guys, no matter what the circumstances, if I ask them, tell me who Jesus is to you. They just start to talk about it, and all of a sudden, boom, and I'm, I'm good to go. Or ask them, what is your favorite worship song? Yeah. And they'll start to hum it. It doesn't matter what their singing ability is. As soon as they open their mouth and start, my hand responds. So cool. I think it's being aware 
of the atmosphere you carry because it's easy to pray in a church when there's an atmosphere of praise and you know mm-hmm. the, what you're doing there is worshiping God and the focus is God but when you're in a coffee shop you know for me at least I have to align myself and get in tune with what the Holy Spirit is saying mm-hmm. because you carry that atmosphere so it's like if you just walk up to me and you're like pray for me and I'm not thinking about it, I'm like okay but it's like as soon as I get vertical with the Lord and I'm like okay Holy Spirit what are you wanting to do I feel like there's more anointing and power that comes in that because it's always three no matter who you're praying with there always needs to be three present it needs to be you the person you're praying for and the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. not, the third way that I do it is I ask them what is your favorite Bible verse and those, the music, the word, or just asking them about Jesus, mm-hmm. it, it always, boom, it goes. Mm-hmm. Now, on the reverse side, um, you can quench the spirit. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, and I'm telling you this because mine's such a feel thing. It's, I've... <laughs> I don't have a lot of um, ex- years of experience. Rodney has been a minister for so long, and he he knows. So, I mean, he just knows from all those decades. I like got thrown into this. Thank you, Jesus. April 29th, two thousand ten. So I tell people, oh, Bob, oh, Bob. <laughs> hopefully it excuses some of my stuff, but because I'm, I'm still very, I'm so excited about this. Guys, I get to be here. <laughs> my family, giving away my clothes, they did not think I would survive. No one thought I would survive, but Jesus knew. Yes. Yeah. When I'm praying for someone, and they so um, I call it um, lessons from a hand on fire because honestly I can melt a gallon size bag of ice back in the States I always ask churches for a gallon size of ice and by the end of the um, healing session my the gallon size bag of ice is totally water why? Because, uh, I mean, I keep putting, it's burning up. Do you see how she's stressed? We're, We're raving. opposites. Yeah. Opposites I love her to pieces. But she's cold. I know it's cold. And I'm burning up all the time. I don't need a winter coat because I'm, it's that holy fire or what it, I don't know what it is, but since I've been healed and this goes, I don't need a coat. I don't need a sweater. And I look ridiculous. I look constantly like I swam in because I'm just dripping. But I've noticed that when I'm praying for someone and they, it's okay to tell your symptoms. I mean, that's the Lord wants you to tell your symptoms. But when you keep going, mm. and then when I was 13, and my neighbor across the street, nah, 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 you know, that, that kind of mm-hmm. complaining. It goes beyond. I'm not talking about telling your symptoms because I had a laundry list of symptoms. In fact, when they asked Rodney to pray for me, and he said, okay, tell me what would you like prayer for? <laughs> my friends, there were seven friends present. And they all just started buckshotting <laughs> all my issues, and he wa- and Rodney was like, "Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do is just start at the top and work my way all the way down." And so he did, and it it didn't stop the flow to hear from all those different people all the different symptoms. But when someone has a um, a complaining spirit, it quenches it. You talk about ownership too. When you you would always say I was battling. Yes, that when you don't own your. Um, I had a friend who said, Susan, you do not have my. The name of my disease was dysautonomia. I know it's like this long, but. 
you do not have dysautonomia. You are fighting dysautonomia. And she said, you need to, to look at it as if there is a line in the sand and standing beside you is Jesus. You're wearing the same team colors and you are fighting your disease on the other side of the line. And it helped me so much to realize one that what I was what I had was was not from Jesus. He's fighting it with me and that we're we're together in it fighting. Um, the people when people are talking to me about what's going on and they start cursing and okay. in the states that'll um it's just some people just you know they're they call that no filter <laughs> totally no filter and all these f-bombs are coming out about how horrible they feel i'm i'm like i gotta pray for you and you gotta stop cursing because <laughs> i it just it's amazing how it just stops it and even words that i'm pretty i susan am pretty comfortable with um the spirit is not the um the that that just it doesn't work mm -hmm. um on one christmas eve i was cooking dinner for 22 it's one of my favorite times of the year and i this was two years ago and i am cooking dinner and i have got all those you know at the last minute you've got all those vegetables that are getting ready and on the stove and stuff I am working hard on all my vegetables and in walks my stepdad and he is um, elderly and he is in so much pain and he does not complain about it at all. But he walked in the house, walked by me, hugged me and boy, I am pouring sweat because as soon as he hugged me, it was like Jesus wants to heal him. Jesus really wants to heal him and I can't stop right now to pray for him. And I am pouring sweat and looking ridiculous and feeling very self-conscious. And so I worked it. <laughs> I thought, okay, what I need here, I need to call over my, my nephew, Eric, who is like, we call him the flatline nephew. He, his voice sounds just, he could have done Eeyore. <laughs> so I called Eric over, I said, Eric, Tell me what you've been doing this week. Well, Aunt Susan, I don't know. I'm really bored in my job. Boom, my hand went cold. I could fix dinner and we had a great night. <laughs> so, serious. So, it, what, uh, the only difference between me and y'all is that I, I feel it super sensitively. Like in the airport. Yeah, in the airport. <laughs> parent story. Parent tra tell. <laughs> so we're flying and we're Up traveling here. through the airport and Susan is drenched in sweat. And she, like every time we walk through a crowd or something, she's like, oh my gosh, Jesus just wants to heal. And it really reminds me of when Jesus was in the crowd and Mary grabbed his robe and the power went out. Like that's really what's I happening. Wish they would like, grab. <laughs> she goes through places and like she can just feel like God's heart for these people. Mm -hmm. And so, and he does It's an care. awesome anointing, I think. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> but she gets away. <laughs> I feel like a weirdo wolfie. Oh. Um, but so can I have a, please. a question? So if you do feel that way, um, when do you decide I, I'm going to stop to do this or I'm not going to stop to do this? Like when, mm -hmm. if you're feeling the anointing, like I would automatically assume I need to stop and start praying for everybody. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'd I never make your fly. <laughs> it's a learning <laughs> process. <laughs> That's what I mean. But there's then there's other people who just say, like I know I've heard Heidi Baker, who's just like I'm gonna pray, and then they delay the flight for her. You know that kind of story. And I'm just wondering what. I'm not sure they told the flight for me. <laughs> <laughs> she got that but anointing. yeah, she does. She She's. Does. <laughs> That's where we call it process. <laughs> process. So I sat down. Um, there, were, you know how you get on a plane and there, you're you're sharing that little row with someone else. 
Well, there was a tiny little lady that I sat beside, but she was like 97. And she could, she's wearing a, um, a thing around her neck that says, speak up, please. So <laughs> I sweated the whole way here because I kept thinking, you know, sitting beside that big muscle man would be a lot easier for me because he's probably in good shape and he doesn't need any healing and this little lady. So the whole time, I mean, I will, if it's in a restaurant and I have, to, it more is if, if someone is highlighted, then okay. I, I try to stop and pray for them. So it's not necessarily when you feel the anointing, it's more when there's a... When there's a highlight. highlight. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, for, that's with me. Okay. Because the feeling, it, it kind of happens a lot. Oh. <laughs> that's why at the beginning of the service tonight, I'll probably go up to the front row and hang out. It's not because I don't want to like go back and visit with y'all because I love people. I love people. I don't get tired of people. I love people. And I love talking to people and I love hearing about their lives and what's going on. But the people who are sick, I'm going to be so drenched. You know, it's not fun when everything you own is soaking wet <laughs> and you got to go to the bathroom. You got to figure out how to get everything back up and it's wet and yeah. sticky it's just oh gosh okay so I, that's me complaining i'm sure my hand is cold but um that would be me um impartation when's the first time you ever had an impartation brazil brazil and what was interesting about my impartation i'd heard a lot of people talk about when they when randy prays for them that you know you just get blasted or you feel fire or you feel and I was probably the only person still standing at the impartation. So I was like, okay, I missed it. I didn't get anything. And I went home that night, or Susan and I were sharing in a room, and I laid in bed that night, and my whole core just felt like it was vibrating. Um, and so for me, I realized, like, I did get a lot more. But, you know, just having to work through that, because a lot of people are feelers, and so they base what they get off of a feeling. And I've since then had... I mean, impartations from a lot of anointed people, and I usually don't feel, but like I'll go somewhere, and even, I think for me, I get it more in wisdom of what I pray for people. I'm like, wow, how did I know that? And then I'm like, oh, that's that wisdom from that person, and um, so I just don't, the manifestation is good, but don't base it on the manifestation, no, no, because yeah. you can get yeah. distracted by that. Mm -hmm. but, um, Mm -hmm. And when you've had, when you've seen people receive an impartation, what different things have you seen them do? Some um, people laugh, some people shake. Yeah, a lot of people will start crying or shake or um, whoop, whoop, sometimes whoop. you just feel the peace too. Like sometimes <laughs> when I pray an impartation, there's just a countenance change on people that's like you just have to be looking at them to be aware of just the difference. Um, I have had people manifest and I've imparted to people that were not saved before in Brazil and that was interesting. Um, what happened? She manifest in my ear. What does that mean? Um, well it's hard to tell like you have to know the spirit because she was shaking which we hear about that all the time with Jesus but then she hit the floor and she started slithering like a snake and what we found out is that she had not accepted Jesus so when you pray for impartation for people the first thing you ask them have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and then would you like an impartation of the Holy Spirit the fire of the Holy Spirit I think praying for healing is the easiest evangelical um, evangelistic tool on the planet because if someone has not accepted Jesus and they have a pain they've thought long and hard about wanting that pain to get out of there and I'll ask them well if I pray for you and Jesus heals you would you like Jesus to come live in your heart well if he heals me you know then he trumps my God, da, 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 da. <laughs> And last week I was in Nepal. I went over there because um, one of the impartations 
that I want to pray for each of you all is impartation to break off trauma. Mm -hmm. It's really so huge. Mm -hmm. And especially among um, people who have survived an earthquake and their house, I mean, everyone was, was deeply impacted mm -hmm. by the earthquake. So I had a chance to pray for people in the leper colony. It was, um, it was really amazing. I mean, I got to do that, guys. But <laughs> um, praying, just breaking trauma off of people, they couldn't understand me. They were speaking Nepali. But so I'm praying in English and no one's translating, but because they kind of waited till the end to translate what I'd said. But when I broke off trauma, they would start crying mm -hmm. and they would have a countenance change. Mm -hmm. And then once their trauma's broken off, it's so much easier to pray for physical healing mm -hmm. or a inner healing mm -hmm. because it kind of acts like a shell that, mm -hmm. uh, um, that makes it hard to penetrate. Yeah. And another thing about impartation, Bill Johnson says a lot, I can impart to you what I've been given, but I can't give you my experience. And a lot of times you see very anointed people and you want what they have, but you have to be willing to walk the walk too that they've had mm -hmm. to carry it. You know, I mean, it's like, do you really want the, do you really want all this? Because it's amazing, but there's a lot that can come with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before, um, one of the things I want to do is go around and pray for each of you all. And I would love it if, um, and parents gonna do that as well. What questions do you all have about impartation? None? Okay, how about de-sliming? Do you have yes. any idea what de-sliming <laughs> is? I was just asking, maybe, I mean, I came in late, so I thought maybe it was already. Oh, come on, what? Well, um, why don't you explain that much? I'll yeah, maybe start with, with the song and yes. Like what? Okay. okay. Yeah. Or with, yeah. yeah. Go. Okay. When you pray for people, something leaves them, whether it's pain, something leaves them that's not from heaven. Um, I, I often call them critters because <laughs> it just doesn't sound, um, sound so terrible. Um, because they're definitely straight from hell, period. It's they're from, looking for a place to go. And they are. They're looking for a place to go. Jesus in the Bible um, at one point sent the demons into pigs, and the pigs ran straight into the river. Remember that? And drowned. Right. Um, they're looking, for, they are absolutely looking for a place to go. I had, when my, um, yeah, I'm not going to tell that part. When my sister was dying, she had a bitterness root, and she was dying of ovarian cancer. She became the sister that I had when I was a young girl. As, as she was dying, she learned to live again. It was so cool. But one of my sisters, we, we, we were with her. her um, she didn't have a husband. And she had two little boys, so she moved in with us during her last months. And she was living with us, and we, the four sisters and my parents, took care of her. Hospice came in, but we took care of her. And as she was dying, she became sweeter and sweeter. And one of our other sisters got that bitterness. <clears throat> and that offense mm -hmm. and she became mm -hmm. somebody that was not fun mm -hmm. and a year later when i was healed one of the first things that we did she get my that sister came and said look every you know, my husband's ready to walk out people don't like me anymore i don't know what's happened but can you help me and so i had to um Heard Rodney speak about deliverance once. That is not the, you know, but I was feeling, you know, okay, I've been healed and I prayed for my mom and she's gotten her healing. I can do this. Well, 12 different demons came strolling out of my, my other sister and she was punching and kicking. It was crazy. 
-hmm. It went on for five hours. Wow. And by the end, I mean, and I got other people to come in and help, but then we got my sister back. Well, what happened was as my sister, Catherine was dying, my other sister, those, those critters jumped on my other sister. It was horrible, just horrible. So, the, and that, so, but there, it doesn't, that doesn't need to happen. When you're praying for someone, you can send them to the foot, you can send those critters to the foot of the cross, but it's always important to just de slime, just get mm -hmm. after you've had a time of ministry, say your ABCs. Yeah. Yeah. A stands for attack, attachment, or assignment. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you would break off of me any attack, attachment, or assignment that has been made during this time of ministry. Mm -hmm. And then B stands for, yes. Would you mind very much repeating that? No, not at all. Just, um, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you break off any attack, attachment, or assignment. And A is the only one that has three. It's just, but those are three different ways that the enemy sends us stuff. It's good to get them all out. Thank you. And <laughs> that's pretty funny. Look. <laughs> that's that really from? pretty. I don't see any pillows. Did Where did Is that just land? Yeah. Are you serious? Wow. So, um, <laughs> did you guys see it land? No, I just saw it right there on the ground. That is wild. It's pretty. Do y'all see it? <laughs> oh, whoops. My tic tacs. Okay. Did that come too? Yeah. Like those. Can I um, something real quick? One please. Time after, my husband's a pastor, and one time after a prayer meeting, we were at a prayer meeting, I saw a tiny little uh, blue, light blue feather Ooh. right near his, uh, his, you know, his notebook. How and blue gorgeous. represents revelation. Yes, it does. Or prophetic. So I put it in my Bible. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. yeah. That so is that, a smart wife. <laughs> so B stands for burden because you want to ask oh, yeah. Jesus to lift any false burden that he does not intend you to carry. And guys, if you pray for people and you don't de-slime, people will call, um, will talk about, you know, afterwards I just felt weird. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why. Yeah. And during your prayer life and your time with the Lord, being in the Word, it all goes away. But you can fast track this by just de We live in this world. Mm -hmm. I do it every day, whether yeah. I've done ministry or not, because we live here. Mm -hmm. And our home is in heaven. So C is curse. Jesus break every curse, written or spoken, over me or my family. Want to talk? Talk now. Okay. Oh, you, get over here. Come here. Curses. Jesus break any. Break every curse, written or spoken over me or, or my family. Yeah. Is this something, um, I mean, you wouldn't do it the same way <clears throat> after than you would, but would you do it before, like, a, would you also like the covering part? Like, I would, I would we get intercessors. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would always cover yourself, before just plead the blood of Jesus yes. before you start. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about is, because the Bible says, like, we war not against flesh and blood, but against <laughs> darknesses and principalities. And so when you're stepping out in this stuff and you're going after the things of the kingdom of heaven, you've got the kingdom of darkness coming after you. They want to stop you. And you will have, um, I mean, I've been in meetings where there are witch doctors and they're trying to put curses on people. And I mean, there's a lot. It, and I don't say this because it's not fear. I mean, there's no fear in this, but it's awareness too. You have to know like what's coming against you so you mm -hmm. can attack it. And um, 
I think that it's just really important, like when you go in these places, to know, like I'm a threat now. Like I am, I am stepping out. I'm bringing a threat. And so we, like, we'll, when we came up here, we had intercessors praying. We, mm-hmm. um, but I also know, like, the importance of being rooted in your identity because you know that if you're rooted in Christ, like you have the authority of heaven backing you. So it's not a fearful thing, but it's just to be so aware that. The attacks are real. So if you start stepping out in this and then you start experiencing things, the enemy's going to want you to back down, push yeah. forward. <laughs> That's so true. Mm-hmm. Okay, D is defilement. Mm. I wasn't really sure what that stood for until I went to Brazil. And once you see people manifest, you definitely feel like you've been defiled. Mm. That's defiled where the sliming comes from. That's, yeah. <laughs> the term slime. Mm hmm. But praying for that Lord remove any defilement that happened to my eyes, my ears, mm-hmm. um, any of my senses and my brain. And everything I ask, I ask in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Even if I'm asking it for every letter, I just cover it all in the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I want to tell you a story. I went to I went to a conference with several friends, and the speaker was not someone that I was familiar with, but my friends were going, and I thought, well, yeah. And he's known as a Christian speaker. Well, he may be a Christian speaker, um, but he, um, I've since found out, will often carry a spirit of offense that tags along with them. And that spirit of offense attacks the participants. Well, I've never heard of anything like this. I lived through it. I mean, I experienced it, and I can tell you it is real. Be careful who you go to and cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. And when you get in your hotel room at night or when you come home from the conference at night, do your ABCs because um, the group that I went with, the only two who didn't get slimed by that spirit of offense were me and my roommate because every night I'd lay in bed and before, right after we'd turned out the lights, before we'd fallen asleep, I would just de-slime us. Mm -hmm. I mean, just say exactly what I, just go through the ABCs. People have added E, Father Phyllis, with encouragement. That's E and F, um, the Holy Spirit, joy. You you can add things that you want the Lord to fill you with. Mm -hmm. But the most important part is A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. Just covering that. Jane? How does the spirit of offense manifest itself like what oh my gosh just on the way home we started having the they started having arguments with each other okay. and then um jealousy gossip yeah mm-hmm. it I'm tore apart a whole i mean we watched a company kind of split it was horrible just horrible it usually divides mm-hmm it divides, but and people even say, I am so offended. And one of the, Bill Johnson has a great talk called Being Unoffendable. Mm-hmm. That if you've ever um, Googled him or gone to iTunes, that is worth every minute of your time to listen to. Being Unoffendable. Y'all want to hear Bill a Johnson. healing testimony story? It goes with Randy's impartation, the kid. Go. Pray for the guy. Go. Um, so this is just a good, a good. Um, one of my favorite stories from Randy Clark was about after, like, so whenever you go on the ministry team with them, you get an impartation from him. And there was this kid who went, and I think his parents had kind of signed him up to go. I don't know that he was really as much of a willing participant at the time. And he didn't think he had anything to offer. He didn't think he had any anointing of healing. And um, so... They, all the ministry team goes up and the kid's just standing there and he's like, okay, God, like, 
give me something like a headache or something. Something you don't really have to have a lot of faith for. And he <laughs> turns around and he sees this man in a wheelchair. And so the kid turns back around. He's like, I'm not going to make eye contact with him. I don't want this guy to come near me. So this guy wheels over and he tugs on his shoulder, on his shirt. And he's like, will you pray for me? And this kid is like, I do not have faith for this. Like, just realizing how go to somebody else. And everybody he was else for this. He's like, go to Randy. He's like, why are you coming to me? And so the kid starts to pray for him, and he just felt this overwhelming sense. Like, I have to. I don't have faith to see this guy get out of the wheelchair. I don't. I don't even believe he can right now. But I do believe he needs to feel loved. So the way he prayed for this guy is, he's like, I just want him to know he's loved. The man was a police officer had been shot in the stomach, was paralyzed from the waist down, and got out of his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I mean, not about guy, what you feel. Exactly. It's not about your, it's not your level of faith. No. Or, it or is who like you prayed for before. Stepping out, taking a risk, <laughs> and knowing first and foremost that all of this is because we want to lead everybody to an experience and encounter of God's love. And we can't guarantee, nobody can guarantee that even a headache, and even a, I say even a headache, headaches are incredibly debilitating. Sure and it's all supernatural, are. you know, it's like just because we think one yeah. pain is less than another, like it's all supernatural, like none of us have the ability to take it away. Um, I have a son at home right now with um, traumatic brain disease and he battles these incredible complex migraines every day. So head headaches are, I'm very aware of how horrible headaches are but when you're praying for when you're praying for someone we can't know that they're going to be healed but we can know that that they feel loved and that's really the most important thing is that when you're praying for someone to know to help them know that they feel loved yeah. and I just want to um, point out the worship leader sitting beside Janet, what is your first name? Anissa. Anissa. Anissa did such an amazing job of that last night. Mm -hmm. She asked me to come over um, for a woman who had a long list of um, symptoms. She was in a great deal of pain and suffering. And Anissa just had done such a wonderful job of making sure that that woman felt very loved and cared for. Mm -hmm. The woman didn't want to move. I mean, she was just, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, Thank you. that's the most important thing. You did great. Thank you. And you did great Thank with the workshop. Over. I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like, ah, I don't think I have the faith to have all this. You know, like, ah. The list was really yep. It's like training ground, here you go. <laughs> training ground, so. so is there, both of us, um, are going to pray for you. You can start with Fern. I'll start with James and we'll just go around. Pray impartation. Yeah. Is that good? Are y'all good with that? Yes. Sure. I have a, a last question about this timing. I'm, yes. It's a very timely thing for me. Anyway, um, do you do the A, B, C, D, and do you extend that to your whole family? I do. Yeah. yeah. Another thing with the timing too is like, I don't know how much y'all have learned about atmospheres and stuff, but like you can be in one place and you can feel totally fine and joyful and peace, and then you can walk in somewhere else and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh, like I feel uneasy yeah. and all these different things. Yeah. And that, I mean, right yeah, then yeah. just stop and just be like, okay, I put the blood of Jesus over me, mm -hmm. and whatever's going on here is not mm -hmm. mine. And mm -hmm. you know, and just remember, like, okay, this is what I carry, and so. It, it goes for anything. You can either it can come with praying for people, or if you're walking into another atmosphere mm -hmm. that you're definitely sensing something's going on. Yes. Do you have this on your site? This is, like is this being taped today this morning? It yes. is being it taped. Is. Good. Oh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and are we be able, are we going to be able to get this yes. on the site like in writing? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Because mm -hmm. I've never I've prayed for people for healing, but I've never heard of this lining and it's time I know. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. You can even send that up to Jerome. To you can. <laughs> I will send talking. that to Jerome mm -hmm. so that you Thank get you. it. Thank you. It's key. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like eating cherries. You eat the fruit, you spit out the pit. Yeah. And the I, can, pit. I can sense that I probably have come to 
repercussions sure. because I didn't know. Yeah. This is never, I've never heard of this timing. Mm -hmm. And I've been praying for people. Mm -hmm. My ministry. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to. Well, good. Do y'all have any other questions? Is this making sense to everybody? So we can get a list of this to sit on the side. Absolutely. Yes. I'm a list person. I used to have a question so am I. About more about the impartation. Um, and basically, when we're praying for people, it's really more important where we are faith wise than where they are faith wise. Is that true? Like, do you feel like it's, it's equally important where they are that they need to really no. believe no. Like, this is going to happen or can happen? Or do you feel like it's more that like we, as a person praying, are like bringing the authority of Jesus over their I mean, I think when I was walking into Target, right after I was healed, walked into Target, and I'd been out to, to see Rodney and Mary, and they had kind of trained me in what to do and what to say, mm -hmm. which is basically, hi, I believe in healing prayer. May I pray for you? I mean, there you go. That's it. But <laughs> I like walk, everybody believes what you believe. <laughs> yes. I walked into Target, and right by the hot dogs, right as you walk in the door, right by the hot dogs, this couple, this couple was sitting, and she had a burqa, um, and obviously Middle Eastern. I walk by her, she's highlighted, and my hand goes on fire. And I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm yeah. The most yeah. <laughs> so I get my cart, spin around, I said, hi, my name is Susan. I believe in healing prayer. And I believe that Jesus wants to heal your, and by the time you say that, he'll tell you what it is. Wow. It's stepping out in faith, like yes. way out. But I said he wants to heal your legs. And she looked at me, how did you know? And she pulled up, I, what looked like a skirt was actually pants, just very full. And she pulled up her, her um, pant leg on one leg and she had this, like the color of Jane's shirt, just angry, you know, bright, angry, just mottled parts on her, excuse me, on her leg. And so that's a syrup burp. I had crepes for breakfast. <laughs> yes. oh, so good. Yeah. That's it. It was hard for us to come here after <laughs> I just want to eat more crepes and syrup. Okay, yeah, Quebec, y'all have syrup that beats the Thank pants you. off anything in the United States. Okay. Back to this woman. This woman was not, she didn't have faith for it. She's looking at me like I'm nuts. But um, she, I asked her for, if she would like prayer, and she said, okay. And you could tell, you know, it was like, just to get you going, you know, get you out of here. Sure, I'll pray. I mean, I'll let you pray for me. So I took her hand, and when I took her hand, she kind of did this little jolt thing. Mm -hmm. And then I prayed a quick prayer. We checked her legs, and it went from the color of Jane's shirt to a very um, pastel color. It was still there, but it was definitely markedly different. Mm -hmm. So... I said, great, let's pray again. And so I thank Jesus, always, second time, thank Jesus for what he's doing and ask for more. And for whatever reason, he loves you to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I did that, lifted up her leg. It was even lighter, but it was still there. So I did it a third time. Third time she lifted up her, her pant leg. It was t completely gone. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. She had no faith for it. But God, so one of the things I've learned with this hot hand is that Jesus is not, he doesn't really care about the attitude, the, wait, he doesn't care about the condition of the heart, that, uh, that he, ju he just cares and he wants that person, he sees all of us, all of us as his children, and he wants us healed. So... After that, I asked her if she wanted the Jesus who just healed her legs to live in her heart forever. She said yes, walked her through, 
the prayer and her husband came up she showed him the legs and then he also accepted Jesus right there in Target by the hot dogs <laughs> so I think to answer your question like I think it's easier when you have faith than they have faith sometimes but like there's no formula like sometimes you can have faith and they have no faith and they're healed sometimes you have no faith and they have a ton of faith and they're healed and um, how much would you say a person's will to be healed plays in because there are people who get comfortable being sick and that's right. They prefer to be sick. They, they, really like that, yeah. Yeah. they are making an agreement with their illness. Yeah. I think sometimes that's, that's harder right. than yeah. whether they have enough that faith is, or yes. not. It's kind of like, do you really want this illness to go? Because if this goes, then you don't get that attention for that's being right. sick. And that's right. they've gotten comfortable in that place. And mm -hmm. so I have found personally the people that I pray for, mainly for emotional healing, who really have the desire to be freed of it, are the ones who get free, than the ones who will come and say, oh, I want to be free, but they like to lay in that bed, too. <laughs> That's us. Sorry, I'm, I am one. I have too many questions. <laughs> no, no. I'm a question person, too. I'm, um, I'm also wondering, like, we've been really talking mostly about physical healing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, last night, like, everything seems to be very physically based when we all know, like, mental illness is so huge, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're talking about, like, being free of depression and anxiety and very intense forms of other I think for emotional depression. things, I would say you have to replace it with the truth. If you want something emotional to go, mm -hmm. you can cast it out, tell it to leave, but you've got to fill it with the truth. And that's the renewing of the mind and yes. what Rodney was talking about with identity statements. It's like, here's the lie I've believed. Now this is what the truth is. Now write an identity statement or something that makes it personal to you and that you are constantly um, putting that back in. I mean, when I, the journey God took me on with identity, I mean, I woke up every single morning and read an identity statement for probably three months. Mm -hmm. And then it finally took root of who I was that I didn't have to say it because I knew it. Like it was, mm -hmm. things would come up and I was like, that's not who I am. I'm not rejected. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I'm not a sinner anymore. I'm righteous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus has paid for me and mm -hmm. I'm worthy. I'm not unworthy, you know. Right. Because I guess that's what I feel like I deal with more than anything because I'm a marriage and family counselor. So I work with a lot of couples mm -hmm. but also a lot of individuals. And more than anything, that's it. It's like mm -hmm. learning that replace all these lies and this junk that's filling our thoughts yeah. and replacing it instead with God's truth. They're laying everything down in place of that and saying, and I'm, I'm speaking tonight and it's about that. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. leaving. I'm just yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll we'll get the right morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, physical and inner healing are so intertwined. Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are. I mean, it's to carry out, like, if you get an inner healing first, usually your physical symptoms will leave. Or if you get a physical healing, then you've got to deal with the inner man, too, yeah. to keep that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in October, before I was healed, I, I went to everybody I could find. Once I found, once I read... Once I had dysautonomia in reading the New Testament and seeing that Jesus healed them all, I was like, well, if he healed them all, and Hebrews 13, 8 is, says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I made that little leap. If he healed them all, he's still the same, then that means he wants to heal me. And I took that truth, and I stood on it. And I Literally. said, yeah, I wrote... <laughs> Psalms 118, 17, I will not die but live and proclaim what the Lord has done. I wrote it in all my shoes. <laughs> with, literally, with a piece of paper and scotch tape. I stood on the promise. still in her shoes. I was checking them the other day. They are. And she doesn't put on sparkles every morning either. <laughs> The second part so I will not die, I will not die but live but really. and proclaim what the Lord has done. And the six years that I was sick, I never thought twice about the second half of that. I would oh write it God. out, but all I cared about was I will not die <laughs> but live. But now I'm proclaiming what he has done. So I'm now living that second half. But point to that. Um, there was a point. Writing things in the Word... Standing on the promise. 
ton of people. I bet 50, 60 ministers pray for me, nothing. Yeah. Pray for me, nothing. And then Rodney prayed for me and I was healed. But the difference is I went to, I went, went in trying to get right, um, Randy Clark to pray for me. I went up to Pennsylvania and went through an, a three day inner healing. And I think going through that inner healing enabled me to okay. get healed when Rodney prayed for me. Yeah. Because he, in doing that inner healing, we broke off a lot of generational curses. Does he have those regularly? Um, Can you go to one? Yeah. You can make a sense yes. of appointment or what is there, restoring the foundation? Yeah, the restoring the foundations. Mm -hmm. But Rodney has got great resources that we need to ask him to do here. Because he can walk. Yeah, well, I will. I'll ask him if he would walk everyone in the church tonight through. Yes. Um, breaking off the generational yes. curses. Yes. But if you're born again, doesn't your generational curse stop? You're no longer in that family. Yes. My family begins with Jesus now. Yes, it does. No but the enemy doesn't play by the rules and he tries to trespass. And that is where it's like you stand firm and like that is broken. That does not pass. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm thinking. There's still a warfare. The curse is broken, but there's still. The curse is totally you don't broken. Realize exactly. Yeah. The I mean, that, does not play that is where being and he's a legalist in the word is so yeah. important yeah. that like because yeah. the battle is who says it like between here and here yeah um you know it's like he is going to question everything do you really believe does god really say that you know and it's like no this is exactly that's what he said and that's for susan and i both i think went through our healings the lord had given us both a verse like hers was psalm 18 118 17 and yep. mine was be still and know that i am god and so through the whole trial of symptoms getting worse and diagnosis getting worse and doctors, you know, what was going to happen getting worse. I was like, okay, that's, that's a fact. That's what you're saying. But the truth, truth is, right. this is what Jesus has said. And I stand in the truth, not in the facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so having that word, yeah. I'm probably going no, into our second. Exactly right. standing. I no, can talk about standing all that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I know. Um, but with, yeah, but with impartation, like just knowing today, like we are going to impart the gifts that people have given us and what we've acquired and obtained, but like everybody's history with Jesus is their own and everybody's journey. Mm -hmm. Like you don't get Susan's journey, but you get the gift that's been given to her. Well, which is really good. So you, you might not sweat, which will be good. <laughs> <laughs> but some people do. <laughs> You might get my cold this. <laughs> when I was in Nepal, I prayed impartation for um, the women that had been rescued from sex trafficking. And I broke off um, trauma and then prayed impartation. And this one woman asked me to come back the next day and she said, I'm on fire, my feet sweat. What do I do? Please pray for me. So I started praying for it, it got worse. <laughs> it was like, well, here's the thing. Everyone will tell you it's a gift. I am so sorry, but it's a gift and the Holy Spirit gave it to you too. <laughs> it's an extreme hot flush. Yes, except for it just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. You know why they call them pores? Because they just pour forth. <laughs> That's quite something. Okay, so how do you want to line up for impartation? Do you want to do it at the door? I'm getting some music. Good. Um, we could do it, either of us, I mean, stand on either side of the door. Yeah, and just kind of like yeah. a fire tunnel. Let's do it. 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 Let's do it.